Okay, I had to attend to Chloe. She was commanding my attention. Anyway, back to the quiche again. So, I've got the mushrooms that I've already sauteed, the porcini that have rehydrated. I put a little bit, not a lot, because it can be too overpowering, of some dried thyme over the top. In the summer, of course, I'd use fresh. And then some chopped green onions on the top of that. And then I'm going to very carefully salt and pepper the top. This salt is called real salt out of Redmond, Utah. I love this stuff, but you got to be careful with it because you do use 25% of it less. All the natural vitamins, minerals, it's really great salt. Anyway, evenly over the top. And then the same thing with fresh cracked pepper. I have not bought ground pepper in I don't know how long. Um, I don't think I really ever have pepper mill. It's that pepper mill is so wonderful. And then fresh grated nutmeg. This is classic French too. Into their quiches, they always put fresh nutmeg. So if you don't have it, you can pick these up cheap at the flea market or wherever. And then buy whole nutmeg. Yeah, it's a little expensive, but you know what? It goes a long way. And then evenly over the top, grate some fresh nutmeg. Now what I'm going to do is fill these all at once. So that's a mushroom gruyere. I think the next one, let's do a Monterey Jack with, we're going to put a little Monterey Jack on the bottom because I love the way that stuff melts. And that too is um, Cabot Monterey Jack. It's really good. And then Cabot aged extra sharp white cheddar. Love that. We'll put that in the bottom. Then I think what goes really well with Cheddar Jack is let's put some onions that I've already chopped and sauteed. So this will be sort of like a quiche Lorraine except of course quiche Lorraine has a different cheese but this will be really good. So and a good part of chopped onions I love it. And then we'll put some bacon on that that's already cooked. And the way I look, like to cook bacon for whatever it's worth, classic restaurant trick, is cook it in the oven, 400 oven, lay it out flat on a sheet tray, you sort of shingle it on the sheet tray. On this size sheet tray you can put a pound of bacon depending on how it's cut, whether it's thick cut or regular cut. But anyway, it's a lot easier. It doesn't trash your stove. Works great. Okay, so we've got onion, bacon, and then you know what? Because it's festive looking. I am going to put a couple of these fire roasted, jarred this time of year, um, sweet red peppers and sweet yellow peppers. They're really good and it'll look pretty when this is done. So we're going to do that. And then in the third one, I have some crumbled goat cheese, which is wonderful stuff. And Again, I like to coat the bottom of that a little, just a little bit on the bottom. And to that, let's put some spinach that I blanched ever so quickly. Doesn't take long, about 30 seconds tops, in some boiling water, pull it out, uh, squeeze it dry, and then chop it. And fresh spinach is really wonderful. I mean, if you're in a hurry, you could use. Uh, chopped, but and always buy a lot of spinach because a little bit doesn't go very, or a, a lot of it does not go very far. So we've got some chopped spinach. Let's do some green onion in this because that adds for quite a bit of texture. Love it. This will be our green one. And because it's the holiday, I think this is going to have to get a little sweet peppers too. These will be really pretty, and they're going to taste good too. These jar the um, these peppers in the jar this time of year they're really inexpensive. Peppers are pretty expensive when they're out of season, you know, minimum dollar each, up to a dollar fifty each. And frankly, I'm not sure they're that good, but in the jars it makes a huge difference. So anyway, we've got that. Now what we're going to do is finish seasoning the top of these two. So we'll do fresh pepper over the top. 
and then we're going to put some salt again nice and even and hold your hand up well over the pan whatever you're seasoning so that you get an even coat because there's nothing worse than if you don't season evenly and you're putting it in globs everywhere then you know somebody's gonna get a whole bunch of salt and so you know and other pieces are gonna get none so anyway that's how you do it nice and even and then we'll put oops, my little nutmeg here's my nutmeg okay then again, fresh nutmeg over the top of these. Quiche batter, because it's so, I don't want to say bland, but mellow, the little bit of nutmeg really makes a big difference. It doesn't take a lot either. And then what we're going to do with this goat cheese one is I didn't put much in the bottom of the pan. And if you're buying this in the log, you can easily just pick off pieces in the top. But if you can buy crumbles, um, that's easy, a lot easier. All right, so there we have that. Then what I'm going to do, I could add some herbs to that, but the green onion, I'd add chives to that, but the green onion works. And bacon and onion on that. I don't know what would you I could add chives to that I could add green onion but I think we'll leave that one alone and then what I'm going to do is fill these as full as they're gonna as full as you can go with quiche batter all right so here's the quiche batter and what this is is a dozen eggs to a quart of cream heavy cream to a quart of half and half and that makes the best quiche batter you'd ever want. If you don't happen to have half and half, what half and half is, is milk and heavy cream. So I have done it in the past where I have cut myself short on half and half. So I take heavy cream and then with the heavy cream mix in the milk. So to this proportion of a dozen eggs to a quart and a quart, it would be a dozen eggs and quart of heavy cream and then three cups of cream to a quart of milk. Anyway, well, I'll have to think about that. Anyway, we'll fix that. But anyway, as you can see, that doesn't really go. That fills these three pans, two of them being, they're basically all the same size. So now, and then by pouring these carefully, you might have to with your finger so that they bake nice, is just move the tops around a little bit. But that will automatically sink to the bottom. All right, so these are going to go now into a 375 oven. That's my convection, so it's really a 400 oven for about a half hour to 45 minutes, turning the oven down to three. 50 convection or 375 regular oven. You want to start it hot so that you can get the dough ready to go. Or so that you can get the dough crispy without sogging it out. Anyway, and these will bake till they're nice and golden. So I'll put these in the oven and then I'll come back and show you what they look like when they're done. All right, I'm back and these quiches look great. They're out of the oven. They set up really nice. And I'm going to take them out of the tar pans before they get stone cold because there's so much butter in the crust. I don't want it to set up around the pan. <clears throat> so to unmold, all these have removable bottoms, which is really nice. It's the only way to do a quiche pan or a quiche, if you ask me, because it's so much easier. So anyway, I have cake rounds, or you can put them on a plate if you want. However, these and the crust is sturdy enough to go to a, a uh, plate, but I'm going to box these and so what I'm going to do is push this out still a little warm and then, whoops I'm going to take a spatula and go around the edge of it just to pull it to the edge 
of the bottom of the pan and then it slides right on under the round. So isn't that pretty? That is the spinach with the goat cheese. This one is the mushroom and porcini. And the same thing, just lift slightly on the edge of the pan or the bottom itself. Put your finger under it. It slides off beautifully. By, by spraying the pans with the fat in the can, whatever kind you want, it just makes such a great, a huge difference, you know, to get these out. It's just a little insurance policy to make sure they're going to come out of the pan. But these have baked really nice, and 375 in a convection oven, or, you know, 400, it depends on your oven temperature, but anyway, um, bakes up for a nice crisp and not soggy crust. So that one's for a pecan pie. We'll photograph that one later. But anyway, then, so those are the three that I did. They're beautiful looking, if you ask me. And also, I had just a tiny bit of that quart, quart, quarter half and half quart cream to dozen eggs. I had just a tiny bit of batter left over, so I put it in a ramekin and baked it up with a little cheese, a little spinach, a little sweet pepper, onion, salt, pepper, and nutmeg. And I gotta say, that is a really good quiche batter. Crustless, and as you can see, there really wasn't that much left over, but wow, it's really good. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this quick quick little quiche lesson and I hope you make it because they are really good. They work great for an easy dinner, a light lunch, brunch, whatever, and they freeze beautifully. So there you go. Hope to see you again and thanks for joining me in my kitchen. Diane signing off. Bye.